Good day guys. Today we're going to be installing custom multi-core firmware onto a fresh micro SD for our GB300. Let's get into it. We're over on our Windows 10 desktop now and the first thing we want to do is back up our stock SD card since if we lose the files to that it pretty much makes the GB300 useless. It's going to be using a cheap USB 2 micro SD reader, plug it into the computer's USB port and we'll just take a look. There's all of our files. I want to copy everything over. So control A to select everything and you can do control C or just right click copy. Go over to somewhere on your computer. For me I'll go to downloads, make a new folder and we'll call it GB300 stock backup. We're just going to paste it into there. I opted to back it up to a spare 8 gig flash drive since I don't have enough free space on this Chromebook. Once you've backed up all your files safely you want to safely eject your stock SD card and we're just going to insert a fresh high quality micro SD card. For me it was a 32 gig SanDisk card. We go over to this PC. Just keep in mind you will lose all the files on this micro SD so make sure it's either brand new or one that you've already backed up and you don't mind losing the files on. All we want to do is right click on our micro SD card. For me it was D drive. Go down to format. We want to make sure FAT32 is selected, not XFAT or NTFS and click start. If there's a volume label, you can just uh, delete it. Click OK and click OK. Once that's done, we want to copy all of the files we backed up earlier from our stock SD over to our new SD card. So again, just going to the backup folder. For me, it was a flash drive. Control A to select everything and Control C or right click and copy. Go over to our new empty drive, which for me was D drive still. Should be nice and empty and just right click paste or control V. Once everything's finished copying, we want to right click and safely eject our micro SD card. We'll put it into our GB300 just to make sure our fresh install works. Just putting the fresh micro SD back into the GB300 now. And we'll power it on. There's the boot logo, it's a good sign. And it does work. Next, we need to find out if we have version 1 or version 2 of the stock firmware. Super easy to do. If you have MAME as a system option, then you have version 2. But if you're missing MAME, you have version 1. Nice and easy. You will need to know this for the next step. We'll power it back off and pop the micro SD back into our Windows 10 computer and install the multi-core custom firmware. We're back on our Windows 10 computer now and we want to download the GB300 tool. So go to Google, type in GB300 base tool. It's the top GitHub link, Namak away, on the right hand side under releases. And we want to scroll down. Now if you have version 2, you can just download the latest version. If you have version 1, which lacks MAME, you want to scroll down a little bit further and you want to get the version 1.0b release from 22nd of August 2024. This is the last version that supports version 1 firmware. For me, it was version 2, so I'm going to download the latest version, scroll down to assets, and you want to get the zip file. Once it's finished downloading, we also want to download the multi-core firmware. So go back to Google, type in GB300 space multi-core. The top link, tzubatowski. Again, on the right-hand side, click releases. And if you're using version 2 firmware, you can download the latest version. If you're using version 1, you've got to scroll down. And it looks like the last version that supports version 1 is multi-core 0.1 version 0.3. So once you've found the correct multi-core version for your firmware, you want to again go down to assets and you want to download the 7-zip file. If you don't already have it, you will need to download 7-zip. Go back to Google, type in 7-zip and top result, 7-zip.org and download the correct version for your computer. Once that's done, we can close off Chrome and open up our downloads folder. If you didn't have 7-zip installed, but you did download it, simply double click on it and click next, next, OK to continue. Once you've got 7-zip up and working, we want to extract both of our zip files, the multi-core and our GB300 tool. Let's right click, go to 7-zip, Go to Extract 2 and do the same for GB300 tool. Now we want to open up GB300 tool. Simply double click on it. You do have to tell it which drive your SD card is assigned to. Super easy to find out if we just drag it to the right slightly. For me, it's D drive and it's the drive where all of our GB300 files are. So go back into GB300 tool, and just press D. If it's a different letter, press the correct letter. Leave everything else as default and click Start. At the very top, we want to click Patch Bootloader on Next Boot. Wait about a second, it should create the folder automatically. And we can close off this. And we want to safely eject the SD card. 
we'll pop it back into our GB300 and patch our bootloader. So we've put the SD card back in, it's going to power it on. On the bottom left of this screen it should say updating, and once it's finished it'll come to the system selection. It only takes a few seconds to update, and if you've already patched it, it will not update it again. So for me, I have already patched it unfortunately, and it didn't show up on this boot. Once that's done, we can turn it back off and put it back into our Windows computer. Now the bootloader's patched, we can go back to our micro SD card, and you can delete the update firmware folder. You don't need to, it is entirely optional. Next, go back to our downloads folder, and we want to open up our multi-core folder, open up SD card, and to install the multi-core custom firmware, you just want to select everything, copy it all. Again, you can control C or right click copy. Go to our micro SD card, which is here. We just want to paste it all here. When prompted, make sure you click replace the file in destination. That's all there is to installing multi-core on the GB300. Now let's go through how to actually use the custom cores. By default, all of these stock ROMs will use the stock emulator, and only newly added games to the ROMs folder will use the custom cores. We'll try and get Doom working. First, we need a Doom 2 WAD. I've already copied mine from my Doom installation. You can get the Doom 1 or Doom 2 shareware WAD for free on Google. Just type in Doom WAD shareware, and it'll be a download link. Once you've got your Doom 1 or 2 WAD, we just want to copy it, go to our SD card, go to the ROMs folder, and these are all of our custom core systems. For Doom, we want to scroll down to PR Boom. There it is there. And we want to paste it in here. If you wanted to use the custom cores for a different system, simply place your ROMs into these folders here. So for Game Gear, you'd put your Game Gear ROMs in the GG folder. For Atari 2600, you'd do it in the A26 folder, and so on. Once you've copied all of the ROMs that you want to try on custom core, we want to go back to the root of the SD card, which is here, and we want to double click make ROM list.bat. It should list every ROM that you've copied into the folder, so for me there's only the one, Doom 2, press any key. If we go back into ROMs now, at the very very bottom, there should be a new Game Boy Advance ROM called Doom2.wad.gba. If you had more ROMs for other systems, they'll all appear here. Now finally, we can right click and safely eject our micro SD for the last time, and we'll put it into our GB300. So out of the box, nothing seems uh, different. All the old systems are still there. To play our custom cores, we want to go to User, ROMs and Settings, open up the Games List, or ROMs folder, press A. The top two were included out of the box on this uh, SD card, but the last one, Doom 2, is the one we just uh, copied over. So just press A to select it. You'll see a red screen with multi-core at the top, and it should be loading. And there is our Doom 2. There is sound. There we are there. Save states do work just like any other system. So I can start and select. Go down to save. Go back to resume. And if we go new game. So we're in a different spot now. We can go start select. Go down to load. There we are, back where we saved. From my initial tests, all the custom cores do have the ability to save and load states. To quit out, just start and select as you would normally, and go quit. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.